None of the astronauts on this space shuttle flight grew up with an all-consuming ambition to fly in space, except for the one crew member who will stay on the International Space Station for two months when the others go home after delivering the Columbus Laboratory module. The crew is led by Steve Frick, a commander in the United States Navy, who was born and raised in the Pittsburgh suburb of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Great place to grow up, uh, beautiful area, uh, great schools. Uh, my, most of my family was in that area, and we stayed there all the way through uh, growing up in high school before I left to go to the Naval Academy. I was in college as the shuttle uh, started flying. Uh, and you can't watch that as someone who's interested in aviation and flying and not be just absolutely captivated by the experience. But flying fighter planes came first. Frick earned his bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering at Annapolis, completed flight school, and was assigned to a fighter squadron that deployed in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, where he lived his dream of flying jets off of an aircraft carrier. He followed that with study at the Naval Postgraduate School, where he earned a master's in aeronautical engineering, and a year at the Navy Test Pilot School. So I, I found myself in test pilot school with a master's degree, and I had the basic requirements. So I put in an application and basically just got lucky. Frick was selected as an astronaut in 1996 and made his first flight as the pilot on the 2002 mission that delivered the S-0 truss to the International Space Station. One crewmate from that flight joins him on this mission. Air Force Colonel Rex Walheim is from the San Francisco Bay Area, born in Redwood City and raised in San Carlos. Like Frick, his love of flying dates to his childhood. My father was a pilot, and so uh, I think I, that a lot of that comes off uh, from him, and uh, he exposed me to flying at an early age with uh, both going to air shows and uh, taking uh, some small lessons and stuff when I was uh, still in high school. And uh, I just enjoyed hearing his stories, and I always just was something in the blood, so I think it, uh, it came, from, came from the genes. Walheim earned his Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering at the University of California at Berkeley, where he also graduated from the ROTC program and was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Air Force. And when I got down to pilot training, uh, the doctor said they thought I had a heart murmur, and so they wouldn't let me fly. Um, and so they said, well, where else are you going to go? Uh, what are you going to do uh, instead? And so I said, well, I'd like to do some engineering work, maybe come to the Johnson Space. And they said, well, now you're going to North Dakota instead. Where he worked as a missile warning operations crew commander. More than a year later, he was assigned to JSC and worked as a mechanical systems flight controller before he was transferred to a management job at Air Force Space Command headquarters. In the meantime, he had applied for a waiver to be assigned as a flight test engineer at test pilot school. And the interesting thing was when I went to get my, my waiver for this heart murmur, the, uh, the doctors uh, said, well, you don't need a waiver because you don't have a heart murmur. And so uh, not only was working as a flight test engineer open, but now potentially NASA could be a, an option also. Walheim completed the flight test engineer course and was an instructor at the Air Force Test Pilot School when he was picked by NASA for the astronaut program. Walheim made two spacewalks on his first flight in 2002, attaching the S-0 truss to the station's Destiny Laboratory. The third spaceflight veteran on this crew is European Space Agency astronaut Hans Schlegel. He was born in the southern German town of Überlingen on the shore of Lake Constance. We came from the eastern part of Germany, which was occupied uh, by the Russian side at that time in a socialistic system, and my parents decided pretty close to the Iron Curtain. They can't bear it, so they came over to the western part. We started out in the south. We moved up north. I have uh, many brothers and sisters. We were nine, uh, so they all spread over Germany. Schlegel picked up some American brothers and sisters, too, when he spent a year in high school in Council Bluffs, Iowa, as an American foreign exchange student. After completing his military service, Schlegel earned a degree in physics from the University of Aachen, worked there as an experimental solid-state physicist, and then moved to the private sector, studying optical and electrical properties of semiconductor materials. His interest in spaceflight was piqued one night in his lab when he was asked to study a sample of a material grown in space by a German astronaut. And I said, okay, when we have German astronauts bringing me this samples here, whenever Germany looks again for astronauts, I will apply. And so it just happened. Two years later, it happened, and I applied. And he was selected, joining the small corps of German astronauts. In 1993, he served as payload specialist on the German-sponsored D-2 Space Lab mission 
and later trained at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, as a backup for a flight to the Mir space station. In 1998, Schlegel was chosen for the Consolidated European Space Agency Astronaut Corps and was sent to Houston for astronaut training. Another member of that astronaut class is European Space Agency astronaut Leopold Eyarts, a general in France's Air Force who was born and raised in the Basque Country coastal town of Biarritz, just north of Spain. I think what I inherited from mm, this uh, this country is probably the uh, it's it's a country where people usually stick to their goals. Um, they have uh, strong traditions, but uh, also they 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 like adventure and they like to to go and discover the world. In the case of this native son, the desire was to explore more than just this world. I decided that I would like to be an astronaut uh, when I was about 12 years old and I saw the, uh, the first uh, U.S. astronauts stepping on the moon and walking on the moon. Everything later on that I did at school or in my professional choices or uh, um, later as a, in my professional uh, life as a pilot or a test pilot was uh, driven by the idea of becoming an astronaut one day. Ayarts left Biarritz at 17 to study math and physics, joined the French Air Force Academy three years later, and graduated with a degree in aeronautical engineering. After 11 years flying operationally and as a test pilot in the Air Force, the French Space Agency chose him as an astronaut. Ayarts spent almost three weeks on board the Mir space station in 1998, in the days just after American astronaut Andy Thomas arrived for his tour of duty. Later that year, he was recruited by the European Space Agency and assigned to train at the Johnson Space Center in Houston with the 1998 class of astronauts. Three other members of that class are making their first space flight on this mission. Leland Melvin was born and raised in Lynchburg, Virginia, the son of school teachers. Although he was a success as an athlete, his high school teachers inspired him to pursue science, like the chemistry teacher who dragged him to the front of the room so he'd pay attention and she was doing an electrolysis experiment, you know, running current into water, separating hydrogen and oxygen. And then we, you know, obviously blew up the balloon and lit a match and blew the hydrogen up. But it was one of those moments that things clicked and it said, wow, this is what I want to do. He wanted to play football, too. Melvin earned a scholarship to the University of Richmond, where he played wide receiver while earning a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. He was drafted by the Detroit Lions of the National Football League, but was injured in training camp. So Melvin began doing material science research at the University of Virginia while he pursued a football career, first with the Toronto Argonauts and then with the Dallas Cowboys, until an injury finished his football dream. Melvin went to work at NASA's Langley Research Center while completing his master's in material science engineering at Virginia, and became friends with fellow scientist Charlie Camarda before he became an astronaut. One moment, I remember I was giving a talk, and John Young and Charlie had flown up to Langley, and I gave a talk to a man who had walked on the moon, had flown every vehicle known to mankind, and, you know, it was very inspiring, and just that moment said, hey, this is something, you know, that would be really, really great to do. Another member of that astronaut class on this mission is Stan Love. The San Diego native grew up in Eugene, Oregon, where he learned a respect for education and a love of the outdoors. He earned his Bachelor of Science in Physics from Harvey Mudd College. From there, I wasn't sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. Came back to Eugene, uh, looked for work, ended up in the corn cannery, by which time I was a couple of weeks of that, and hey, send me to grad school. In six years at the University of Washington, Love earned a master's and a doctorate in astronomy and did postdoctoral work at the University of Hawaii and at Caltech. By that time, I was married and we had a child and I was tired of being a postdoc in, in forced temporary positions. So I looked for other things, did all the um, uh, personality tests and you know the little things to decide what you should be when you grow up. And the answer came back, I should be a planetary scientist, which was no help because I already was one. But he got an opportunity as a staff engineer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and worked on optical instrument systems for spacecraft before he was selected as an astronaut. The pilot on this crew is U.S. Navy Commander Alan Poindexter, a Pasadena, California native who was raised in a Navy family. My dad was in the Navy, uh, as I am, and uh, we grew up all over the United States, uh, near Washington, D.C., in Rockville, Maryland, and in Virginia, and California, and Florida. 